to worship God tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's something about praising God that gets God excited. And His presence comes to where He's excited. Praise God. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's stand tonight. Let's go to God in prayer as we're getting started. Mighty God. Mighty God. Father, we love you God, tonight. We love We're so you. thankful, God, God, to be in your presence, yes, to be in your house, God, God, to lift up your name, God, 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 to give you thanks, hallelujah, for all the things that you've done, for your great and mighty hand in our lives, God. We praise and magnify you, hallelujah. There's nobody else like you, Lord God. We lift up your name tonight, hallelujah. We lift up your name tonight. We magnify you tonight, God, because you're worthy.
Let's all lift our hands right now. Hallelujah. The Lord is good.
yes, the lives are going to be touched. I know that when I was growing up, and I just referenced myself because I, that's what I know best, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Is that right? But you know something? Different services that I was in, hearing different preachers preach and feeling the presence of God and being in that environment, it's what gets you to be where you're at when you're in your middle age. What middle age? <laughs> but it gets you to still be serving God yes. 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 and having a full swamp of God because yes. of those things that you heard. Yes. And so we want to give every opportunity we possibly can. I think there's another event coming up next week with the youth in the district. Yes. But I'm a, I'm a stickler for that. We need to be at everything that's going on. Yes. 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 Amen, brothers. Amen. That, that's how you grow. That's how you get attached. Yes. You're going to do something for entertainment. You're going to do something to attach yourself. Everybody needs to be a part of something bigger than them. Yes. Yes. And there's nothing like being a part of something that Tell God it. is Tell it. in the middle of it. Amen. Where God is leading you. Where God is putting something in your life that's going to stand with that's right. Right. Amen. Well, we're going to ask our ushers to come tonight. person that's here. We thank you, Lord, for your presence, most of all that's here. We thank you for what's going to be said, what's going to be felt, what's going to happen tonight, what's going to indelibly mark our minds and our lives, God. I pray for your touch, Lord, in Jesus' name. Bless, Lord, everything that's done. Amen. I give us unto the Lord. We're just going to march in no real order.
God. You can be seated tonight. And tonight we're not going to belabor the hour. I want to get the man of God up here. I believe he has a word for us. Anointed. I think that goes without saying. Known throughout our district. Done. He did a wonderful job. I didn't really know him several years ago when he was, it's quite a few years ago, the vote came up for um, youth president and Brother Sanson was retiring. He had aged out as it happens. And I saw that name and I everybody else was voting for him. And so I voted. And it was not a disappointment. I'm going to tell you what. This district has been blessed by his Amen. And then when he aged out he's joining us. Yes. <laughs> um, when the position came open for Sunday school, I said, absolutely. Amen. This is a godsend. This Amen. is a perfect, Amen. perfect person. And he's done a wonderful job with that. Yes. And has now started the church in Mariana. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So, so happy to have him here tonight. And I know he's going to bless you. Praise God. Without any further ado, we're going to ask for the Jeremiah Lopez to come Amen. and preach to us. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Man, so good to be in the house of the Lord today, man, with an introduction like that. And what do you say? And I do appreciate Pastor uh, Johnson and the whole Johnson family. Yes, amen. Been part of the district seems like forever. And it's good to see, in a good way, in a good way. Amen. Uh, good to see so many good friends and so many churches here. And of course, Brother Jason, Sister Shell Akers, they were yes, part of that revival and that continues. And I'm, I'm thankful that I'm retired. I like the way he put it. I'm retired, Brother <laughs> Jason. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I remember the days that uh, we had just uh, just a few young people. And, and powerful services then in the chapel. The, the campground said you could fit 200. Uh, but they, they were lying. <laughs> They didn't know that us Pentecostals are different. So. Hello? Hello? But uh, Hello? the acres of others, you yeah. fell from the Lord to the outside. If you haven't been to senior youth camp and you are a young person, yeah. that age you need to go. It's just fantastic. Yeah. A lot of fun, a lot of activities, yes. uh, a lot of pranks. Brother Trent probably does that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good to see all the pastors as well. Yeah. Some Harvest Church, and hopefully I'm not missing anybody. And uh, if you get offended, just pray through tonight. Hello. Hello. That's what it's all about. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but God is so good. God is so good. I, before I preach, uh, my wife is going to grace us with a song, and I appreciate my wife very, very much. Yes. Yes. To do what they do is invite you to preach, and they say, Can your wife sing? Amen. But Johnson didn't do that, so I'm finally feeling good. <laughs> Amen. I love if you can come on right here. Worship the Lord as she sings and song today. Yes, thank you, Lord. 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 Praise the 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 Lord.
Praise the Lord. doesn't so it's a good good place and we got carpet and everything and uh, I, 
I have a a very very uh, high honor for churches that are always staying steadfast. Amen. 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 I'm thankful for what God is doing yes. where we're at. The 14 since March to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Church, God has given you the kingdom as well. Amen. 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 God is not seasonal. Right. He is not seasonal. He's continuing. Amen. Praise God. Turning to the book of Exodus, chapter 33, and I have quite a few scriptures here. The Lord laid this on my heart, this in my spirit this week. And so uh, I'm going to preach. I have preached this before. It's been quite, quite some time. But it's what the Lord has led me to come Amen. to. Exodus 33, starting at verse 11. And it reads as this. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I found, have found grace in thy sight, shew, pretty much show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy yes. sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. Yes. And then going all the way down to verse 17, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also, that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, yes. and I know thee by name. Yes. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And he yes. said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy That's on right. whom I will show mercy. Yes. And he said, thou cannot see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. This is the Lord talking. Right. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand up upon the rock. And it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And then finally in verse 23, And I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Amen. I wonder if you turn your... Bible, put your Bibles down, turn your Bibles up, uh, bi turn your Bible apps off, excuse me, amen, the technology now, and uh, would you pray that God would anoint you, not your neighbor, that God would anoint your mind and your spirit tonight, amen, Lord, in your precious name, Jesus, we're asking for your anointing, your favor, your spirit is already in the this wonderful worship, this praise unto you, God, we're asking, Lord, God, our minds, Lord, our spirits, anoint us, oh God, to hear your word, Lord, your word's going to go forth, uh, but help us, oh God, to receive it the way you want us to receive it, uh, help us to get our biases out, God, and to open our souls uh, to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, now would you clap your hands one more time. Young people give give them a punch, but uh, man, there's some young people just too strong. They may not be <laughs> out. You may be seated. Praise God. Tonight, my topic, subject, title, if you will, is simply the addiction of Moses. The addiction of Moses. Uh, by the show of hands, how many love leftovers? <laughs> man, I love leftovers. Amen. Some are going well. I don't know. Um, I mean, I love them to the point that I prefer leftovers more than the regular food when it was hot. You know, like cold pizza tastes better. Something else to understand. Amen. Amen. I, I hear a lot of yays and I hear a no, no, no. Amen. Uh, but also think about Thanksgiving. And uh, in fact, even before Thanksgiving, they have a place. Uh, many of the young people would know. The Acres would know. My family would know. Uh, obviously, the Johnsons would know El Huero Canelo down in Tucson. Now, they have one here, but it ain't the same. It just ain't the same. <laughs> Amen. And so uh, I remember one time, his name is Brother Moses Pettis, no pun intended there for the title, and uh, the man of, uh, in the Bible. But uh, he uh, went to North Carolina, which the Johnsons are familiar with, and for a season he was uh, pastoring there 
in Greenville, North Carolina, the Spanish work. And, uh, and he came home to Tucson one day, and we met them at El Abuelo Canelo. And uh, he told me they, they don't have Mexican food out there like they need to. And so uh, I said, wow, that's a shame. <laughs> and so he ordered a pound of carne asada meat <laughs> and another pound of carne asada meat. I mean, two pounds and so many tortillas and everything. You, you know what I'm talking about. And we began to eat. But uh, he had to leave because he didn't see me till the last day of his, his travel. And so uh, his family had to leave. And so they couldn't take uh, the pound of leftover meat with them. But I took it. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I was so, so happy. Uh, but, you know, when you think of leftovers, you also think of Thanksgiving. I mean, you get that, that food, you eat, and you're thankful for what the Lord has done. And then the next day, at least in my house, you know, we have turkey this, turkey that, turkey sandwiches, turkey uh, tacos. I mean, you, you know, when you're Hispanic and you live in Arizona next to border town, uh, border state, excuse me, you just, you know, tacos. Uh, I haven't tried taco burritos. It doesn't sound good. But uh, have so much tacos for about a week or two. And then after a while, you have so much, you just go gobble gobble, you know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You feel like it at least. But uh after a while, though, that those leftovers don't taste as good as when you reheated it the next day, perhaps the second or third day. Just it loses its flavor. It dries out. Amen. And we're going to get back to that in just a moment, Lord willing. And again, my topic today, my subject is the addiction of Moses. And when you and I think of addiction, when that word comes up, uh, many things come to our minds, obviously drugs, uh, alcohol. Believe it or not, food, uh, pornography, hoarding, uh, you can name it. In, in fact, even social media. And I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not preaching against it. Uh, uh, but you can get addicted to things of yeah. that yeah. Uh, nature. Right. Amen. Right. Huh? Right. Right. And right. so uh, and let me just pause here. Uh, and and I have, I'm preaching to myself, you understand. Uh, if the first thing we do in the morning is look at Facebook and Instagram before we open even our Bible app, uh, we may have a little bit of an addiction problem where we shouldn't. Amen. Uh, we ought to be so addicted to the Word of God. that we have read, we find that Moses uh, has just been given a command from Almighty God. Uh, in fact, uh, he's been instructed to lead the children of Israel, God's earthly people, uh, towards the promised land. Moses, uh, at this point, has already in his life seen the ten plagues, uh, seen the Red Sea part, uh, seen Israel delivered from the Egyptians, the world, uh, in bondage, if you will, Egypt, uh, in fact, spent 40 days and night, uh, uh, nights in the presence of God, uh, receiving face-to-face -face instruction from God. Uh, and while he's on the mountain, God says, uh, I need you to get back down uh, because my people, the Israelites, uh, they're polluting, they're corrupting themselves. Uh, you see, God was very displeased uh, and wanted to consume them uh, and wipe them out. Uh, yes. But Moses pleads their case and reminds God uh, of his promises towards his people. Amen. Uh, thank God for a pastor. Uh, thank God for you. started I'm thankful now that I'm uh, retired from it I love young people uh, but it's a lot of work amen hey, and you better love pizza because hey, if you don't you're gonna eat it anyways <laughs> and so uh, I remembered in my infancy as a youth pastor uh, that the Lord woke me up one uh, uh, you know he wakes me up not in the morning but in the middle of the night uh, 
2, 3 in the morning, I forget. Uh, and, he, and he called a young lady's name to me. Uh, and he said, uh, if you don't pray for her, uh, I'm done with her. I will let her back. So I will let her leave. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, just the youth pastor. Uh, and I said, Lord, uh, would you have mercy on her? Uh, I'm thankful, not because of me. Uh, I just happened to be the one to stand in the gap. Uh, Mission uh, is when you say, I want to do it, uh, but they said, No, uh, I'm just going to listen. Amen. 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 And so God assures Moses that he will lead them. In fact, going as far as to say, Because you, Moses, have found grace in my sight, and because I know your name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Moses. Witness all these things in his life. Moses, amen. Witness the ten plagues. Saw his staff turn to a serpent and back again. Yeah. The Red Sea part. Yeah. Israel delivered from the Egyptians, the world. Spent 40 days and nights in the presence of God face to face. At that moment. I mean, if I were Moses, I'd be like, all right. You're going to continue through me, my flesh. Would have got the best of me, to be honest. <laughs> you mean you're going to use me? I'm going to be, my name's going to be on the plaque there. Uh, Jeremiah Lopez and his sons and their sons. And that's where the Lord blessed. I mean, you know, most of us would have stopped and said, okay, God, absolutely. But not Moses. Not Moses. Twice saw a man up from heaven. And for 40 years, his clothes and shoes never wore out. I mean, man, that's amazing. You know what I'm saying? His suits, and whatever they wore, robes back then, all their sandals. I mean, man, he, you know, he just had it. Had it made. This was the life of Moses. A man accustomed to the presence of God and the blessings of God. But what happens next just amazes me. Because in Exodus 33, starting at verse 18 now, he says this. And he said, I beseech thee. This is Moses. Show me your glory. Show me that glory. Excuse me. Wait a minute, Moses. You witnessed the ten plagues. You saw your staff turn to a serpent and back again. See the Red Sea. What, what, what do you mean, show me your glory? But what I believe and know of Moses is simply going back to my title. He was addicted to the presence of God.
Moses was addicted to the glory of God. It didn't matter the miracles he saw. Moses knew that God told him that if you see my glory, you'll die. God telling him, I'm powerful. And all you can see is a portion of my glory. You'll die. But yet Moses didn't, didn't back off. Show me your glory, God. You see, when you're addicted to something, and I, I'm not, I'm not uh, using this uh, in, in, in a bad manner. I'm not condemning again. Uh, but when you're addicted to something, uh, you need uh, another fix. Uh, when it's drugs, uh, you got to get another fix. Uh, you might have a dose in the morning, uh, but you want it again at night. Uh, and that's how Moses was uh, with the presence of the And there's no condemnation. I'm thankful there are folks uh, that are in, in the town of Moran and Tucson and, and all over this state uh, have been addicted to things uh, and God has delivered them. Uh, God's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for the sick. He's looking for the wounded. You know what he does? He trains your addiction. You can't get to something. One way or another, why not be addicted to the things of God? Missions trip, just newly married for about five years. See, I almost forgot. Amen. Oh. <laughs> yeah, middle age is kidding us now, Brother Acres. <laughs> <laughs> Missions trip to Brazil, 2007. Our pastor, Pastor Paul Connor, he mentioned to all his leaders, he said, Hey, I want you to do your best to go. I want you there. Missions trip will change you. and he had been to Brazil, and I remember going and felt the nudge of the Lord to go, put it on the credit card so we could pay it off later. Cost a lot of money, but I just knew the Lord wanted me to go, and I wanted to be there. Yeah. And so, you know, it cost about $3,000, but it was worth every cent of it. Yes. Worth yeah, every yeah. cent. And I will pause here. You listen to your pastor. You listen to your pastor, whatever church you're from. and uh, But I'm going to say this. If you can take at least one missions trip, it doesn't matter what, what age you are. I, 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 you, you need to do it. It'll Amen. change you. Amen. But I remember arriving there in Brazil. And uh, the host pastor, Raul Aviar, didn't meet us. And had one of his daughter work pastors meet us. Pastor Hugo. Who pastored a small work of 20 saints. And he was in charge of taking us Americans to all the sites. <laughs> and um, I'm sure he had better things to do. Uh, he spoke Portuguese. I spoke English. <laughs> and everyone else did. And uh, I, I happened to be one of two people that spoke Spanish because he spoke a little Spanish, you know. Taco, <laughs> burrito, whatever it may be. He understood. Baño, bathroom, you know. 
But all the big words we had to kind of, because my Spanish is very, very broken. And so he's hosting us, but had a lot of better things to do. I remember going to a Brazilian steakhouse, and they have some good ones in the States, but they don't have it like over there. I mean, I'm telling you, talk about an addiction. <laughs> Amen. For $14 with tip back then, you could have as much meat as you want. And man, all you, all you did is point to the part of the cow, and they come four waiters on you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Let's get back to the message. Amen. <laughs> but taking us to places, I mean, going to cemeteries, and it's 80% of those that are in Brazil uh, are, are voodoo worshipers, and about, I believe, 60, 70 of them at, at the same time say they are Christians of some sort. Uh, so they are double dipping, if you will. Uh, but so he would take us uh, day after day and pick us up, and I, I, I remember that, and it's exciting. We'd go to this dot of work, and and, and it was a small work. I mean, they have it set up in a, in a building part about uh, this room, half the size. Uh, and in the back was a garage door. And you'd open it and they'd just have church, uh, Brazilian style. And so that was the, the, the environment, uh, you know, for the daughter work churches mainly. And I believe they had about 50 daughter work churches uh, surrounded there. And um, But we'd go to these services and then there came a time that we went to the, the actual conference, the main conference uh, and uh, at that time, there was a big time evangelist. Uh, and this big time evangelist had come uh, to preach that conference. And I mean, I'm talking about I give him your name, uh, his name, so you know him. And, uh, and perhaps I will in a bit. But uh, uh, I remember we came to that conference. I was so excited. It was in a gymnasium. Uh, a gymnasium that uh, didn't have a sound system like you do here, a great sound system. Uh, and you're going to find out why I say that right now. Um, and they didn't have wooden benches. Uh, they had cement uh, benches, if you will. And uh, they had showers that, uh, I mean, the showers, I mean, you take a shower and it, uh, uh, it, you know, it was like taking a shower in the sewage. And I'm not, I'm not joking. It was just that kind of place. Uh, but uh, it was big enough to have this main conference for all these churches to get together, all these daughter churches. And Brother Connor was there, others from Tucson. I was there. Uh, and uh, this big time preacher from America. And so as we get off these little bands, these Volkswagen bands, uh, VW bands, uh, I, I remember going to the front uh, and Sister Janice Alviar, the Raul Alviar, Brother Raul Alviar's mother was there and greeted us. And I heard some singing. And I said, oh, I thought we were early. I was, Are we late? She goes, no, it's very sweet, very sweet. No, it's just uh, we we're already we we're already done with our first and second service. I go, oh, we're late. Says no, we didn't invite you to the first and second because we don't think you Americans can handle it. <laughs> oh. I mean, they back to back to back, right? And and so you know, I, I just smiled, but in my mind, I was like, literally, I paid three thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna get everything of Jesus I can. <laughs> Because this carnal man needs to be changed. <laughs> I just smiled like, oh. <laughs> we ain't sponsoring you. I'm kidding. <laughs> <Total joke. laughs> and so, <laughs> so we go in, and as we're going in, uh, she then added uh, <laughs> some more salt to the wound, if you will. She, she said, yeah, we've had about, you know, I, I think it was like 30 or 40 received the gift of the Holy Ghost already. Wow. I was like, we don't do that in the States yet. <laughs> that time, you know, my mind, they were like smiling. <laughs> and, and, and so in my mind, I was like, oh, the big time preacher has spoken. And, I, and so I said to her uh, verbally, uh, Sister Janice, uh, uh, who, who was the preacher? And she said, oh, Pastor Hugo. And the moment she said those words, God began to deal with me. And from that moment in the service, things began to happen. Uh, in fact, uh, as we were in the service, uh, all the saints, as I mentioned, came from all over Brazil. Brazil, and, and jobs are scarce there. If you don't show up Monday, uh, four to ten people is the ratio are waiting to take your job. That's how bad it is in Brazil. And, and so these people had come a long ways uh, to, to be in a service together. Amen. Uh, came for this service. And so 30 or so received the, the gift of the Holy Ghost already. And, uh, and so God... Again, began to deal with me in that service. I didn't understand what they were seeing. It was Portuguese, and uh, they had a pulpit, and they had didn't have padded seats like the, like you all have here. 
uh, they had the metal chairs, you know, and probably some of these young people don't even know what that is anymore. But uh, these metal chairs, these fold-up metal chairs, that, and we're sitting up there, and there's no platform of any sort, just uh, just flat ground. Uh, and uh, while they're singing in Portuguese, another 10 or 15 received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and God began to deal with me a little bit more. And I began to cry to God and telling God, I want this. I want more of this. Uh, and, and by the end of the service, now the big time preacher got up. Uh, at least 75 of that day uh, received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, evidence in speaking in other tongues uh, for the first time in their life. God continued to deal with me. You see, not only could I not understand the Portuguese, but the sound system was horrible. It's bouncing everywhere. God was talking to me. And I was, I guess you would say, finally listening. Because after that service and that altar call, I didn't go pray with people. I didn't have anything to offer these, the church in Brazil. I got my hanky. I went to back to my chair. And I began to weep to the Lord. And I said, Lord, I want this kind of revival. Yes. I want this in my life yes. in America. Yes. I said, Lord, whatever you got to do, make me sick, make me poor, I'll do it. And as I was saying those words before, the Lord spoke to me. And I heard his audible voice. And he says, it has nothing to do with the people of Brazil, my people, and their poverty. He began to remind me at that moment. He says, those children, you sleep in a hotel. And God said, you Americans sleep in the hotels here in Brazil right now. But these people that... Traveled 11 plus hours, some of them, and could lose their job Monday if they don't show up. It was a Saturday. They came and their children are sleeping on concrete benches, whatever you want to call it. They're sleeping and you have hotels. So God was talking to me and was letting me know it has nothing to do with their poverty. Has nothing to do. He said, you have your nice showers. They don't have their nice showers. They're sleeping on these concrete floors and, and benches. And they're taking showers in that place. And you know what you Americans will do? You, you won't do that. Now, obviously, if you don't have to do it, you would it, right? And so he's talking to me about this. He's telling me that they can lose their jobs. They have no hotels. And as a father, I, I'd make sure that my children would be sleeping in a nice, comfortable mattress if I could. And if you can't do it, I'm not going to camp. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to the convention. We're not going to do it. And so God says, that's your problem. You have legit excuses, you Americans. And these Brazilians have legit excuses. They have all those things, but they're so addicted to my presence that it doesn't matter. They still travel. said it, the legit uh, excuses. Uh, oh, I'm too tired. And I understand if you work in construction and whatever it is, you got to get your rest if you go to school. But God was speaking to me. Uh, and this is what he says. Uh, you only get two hours of sleep because uh, you got to do your homework. Uh, you only get two, three hours of sleep uh, and, and, and you can't pray to me. Uh, and you got to go to the construction site. Uh, but you have that legit excuses. Uh, but my people in Brazil have the same exact excuses and other things. Uh, but they still pray to me uh, and they still read their word uh, and they still come uh, has nothing to do with poverty but has something to do with their hunger and so my question to you is uh, what's your problem uh, why can't you live for God Debbie message. This is a challenging message. Yeah, well, uh, and it gets home, and I'm not nervous if it's quiet. Uh, you say amen, you jump, you do whatever you want, uh, but you let the Lord speak to you right now. In fact, would you lift your hands right now as the Lord begins to speak to you and is speaking to you? The time has come for the American church. We can continue to play patty cake, but the Spirit of God has moved on this state and is looking for those that want to walk 
walk with him. For those that want to walk with him, he will give you revival in your family and in your life and in your local churches. Hear what the Lord is saying. You see, the thing is, you and I will be addicted to something. No matter what, as a human being, we are void. Adam and Eve, in the beginning, were not void. They had the presence of the Lord. There was communion, but when they sinned and took of that forbidden tree, uh, a void uh, was created. In fact, God didn't stop. He is always looking for a relationship with you and I, humanity. And he, he, he gets a rhetorical question. Uh, and he knew the answer, but God was saying, Adam, where art thou? Uh, Adam, where art thou? He knew where they're at. Uh, he was saying, Adam, don't you see what you have done? Uh, don't you see? And since humanity has a void, they tried to feel it. Drugs, alcohol, yeah. social media, you dang the list. Yeah. You can go on and on. And so you and I will be addicted to something. It might as well be the presence of the Lord. It might be, be the house of the Lord. And it might as well be the word of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. Another testimony I feel to share with you tonight. is about my father in 2006. He had a stroke. He has always had uh, seizures, epilepsy. And remember, as a 10, 12 year old child waking up and firemen in, in the living room, and he'd be shaking, grandma seizures, and just going and not knowing what to do, and fear would grip me. And uh, uh, he just lived through those things. So, and uh, in 2006, again, just newly married, just for a few years, uh, I, I, I remember getting a call that, hey, uh, your father, your dad, he's in. Been rushed to University Medical Center, now called Banner Hospital. The U of A in Tucson uh, uh, just had a stroke. He was on the roof. Uh, thanks be to God that he didn't fall, but uh, he's in the ambulance right now. Uh, but you got to understand, even though I was newly married, uh, like a lot of teenagers, I had an edge, a wedge between my father and I. He's never, I've never heard my father do anything or say anything bad. Uh, I, he's never done anything bad to me, but. And he's raised me in church, uh, but there was just something in adolescence that got me. You know, not all, all young men and young ladies, but with this one it did, because I'm stubborn perhaps. Uh, and so resentment grew and dissent uh, and distance uh, in my teenage years. And it carried over even after I was a married man. Not as much, but it was still there. Uh, and um, in 2006, again, he went into the hospital. In fact, he was in ICU. And when you're in ICU, it's the last straw. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the doctor came to talk to my mother and I and one of my older brothers, Sean, and uh, his name was Dr. Payne, first of all. Oh. <laughs> Payne to come for us. <laughs> Amen. But he was well trained and uh, no doubt went through some psychology classes and how to speak and communication classes to, to patients and had good bedside manners and he looked at us and he said, hey, uh, your father, your husband is uh, in stable condition. That's a good sign. And uh, we're not going to go in and operate on him. Well, that's a good thing too. Yeah. And then the words came because he's bleeding. Not much. Okay. We went back to good. But bleeding about the tip of your pinky on your finger. Not much blood. But it's in an area in the membrane that if we operate and we move a little to the left or a little to the right, we could paralyze him or kill him. Of course, he said a whole lot nicer than that. And at first, I felt comfort. Okay, he's stable. Okay. He said we're going to be monitoring him and taking a closer look and we're wanting the bleeding to stop and where we don't have to operate. And, uh, and then it sunk in. I was devastated. This man was saying that he couldn't do anything for my father. And so I went down to the chapel. I believe it was the fifth to the first floor. And middle of the day, and I stood there pleading with the Lord, saying, God, I was alone. Thankfully, I said, Thank God. I said, God, I need my father. I can't lose my father, God. You got to do something. I need a word. 
I need something, God, because there's too much fear and excitement. We need a miracle, Lord. We need, I need a word from you, God. And that's when cell phones were semi-created. <laughs> Back in the late 1900s. We can say that now <laughs> to these young people. Yeah. Learn that from Pastor Connor. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> and so we didn't have smartphones. It was analog. You probably don't even know what analog means. <laughs> Got it, and it just was words, you know, and we get text messages, and that was cool, and I had signed up for some text messages of Bible verses you're supposed to get every day, but I'd get it like once in a week, and, and I thought I, I signed off on it, and I still get one. I got one like yesterday, <laughs> like once a month. <laughs> so somebody out there, some server or computer is still pushing through. But at that moment, as I was saying, God, I need a word. Uh, yeah. This man says it's impossible. I'm the, he's not using that word, but God, I know that's what he's saying. He can't do it. It's impossible for him. And I need a word. And so all of a sudden, my phone started to buzz. And, and I just felt like looking at it, uh, got it. Uh, and the, the scripture came. Uh, and it's it, Matthew and also Mark. And it said, with man, uh, it is impossible. Uh, but with God, uh, nothing. Uh, say and everything's uh, pie in the sky. Uh, everything's easy peasy as they say. But it wasn't. It became a roller coaster. I remember, I don't know if it was that same day or a few days later, uh, uh, I went in on a lunch hour. I was working at Wells Fargo as a banker being trained. Uh, and so I went uh, on the lunch hour. And I went into ICU in the middle of the day. There was no nurses, no doctor, no, no family member. And you have to understand I was barely being trained in the ministry. Uh, and so they, Brother Carter didn't train me just yet about this. So I go in the ICU. And as I walk in, the Holy Ghost came over me. The Spirit of God came over me. And the word of prophecy, the gift of the Spirit of the Spirit, if you will, came on me. And I looked at my father and all of a sudden like my hand just went, whoa. And I said, thus saith the Lord, you will walk out of this hospital a healed man. Me or something, I don't know. <laughs> crazy. And so, <laughs> I kept it. I didn't know what to do. My father was still sedated in a ventilator, tubes all down his throat. Didn't know what to do. And, and, and I remember one day, uh, you know, days turned into weeks and weeks turned into months. I remember one day, uh, in Faith Tabernacle in Tucson, where we have youth convention, the district uh, youth convention. Uh, I, I remember uh, being in the lobby, uh, right before the lobby, the, the, the doors from the sanctuary to the lobby, uh, to the courtyard there. And uh, there was a man, uh, Brother Moses Pettis, father, Brother Herman Pettis, uh, an elder, uh, broken, uh, broken English, uh, and speaks much Spanish, obviously, from Mexico. And, and he looked at me, a longtime friend of my father, and he said, Mijo, como estas tu papá? How is your father, son? Uh, and so I, as he shook my hand, it was after service. Altar call was done. Everybody's kind of talking and leaving. He gets my hand to shake it. He holds it. How's your father doing, son? And I said, oh, he, he's still not, nothing better. He's still, you know, the ventilator. And, and as I'm talking, he begins to pray. And he begins to shake and talk in tongues. And my flesh was saying, oh, what's he doing here? It's not time. Everyone's looking at And he began to shake my hand. And he said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I rebuke the angel of death. I rebuke death. And I rebuke this disease on the Roman Lopez. In the name of Jesus Christ. And he my phone began to pass. And after we're done praying, I get the phone. I get the message. And it's my brother Sean said, you got to get back to the hospital. Dad is in cold blue. He's not breathing. He's not doing well. And so I go to the hospital, and as I get there, my dad's breathing. They said that they, it was a miracle. God did something to doctors. I don't know exactly what happened. And I said, well, when did this happen? And I put two and two together. 
It was happening while Brother Herman Pettis was praying for you. Amen. 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 Rosa, 
Isa ya rosso corrosso to ya rosso to ya rosso Isa ya rosso to ya rosso to ya rosso Isa ya rosso to ya rosso to ya Hello? And I'm going to tell you, man, I, it, it knocked me down for at least good three months. A, a good five weeks of not being able to do much, uh, but three months to get back to normal. <laughs> and and uh, I remember my wife and I were there in our, in our room, and it was about midnight. Uh, and I had enough strength, uh, and I believe it was the Spirit of God uh, that was giving me strength. And we were talking about some family situations uh, and how God needed to do some things. Uh, because if He doesn't, uh, uh, we, we, there's just no other answer. Uh, and uh, as we begin to pray, uh, as we begin to speak, uh, the Spirit of prayer hit me. And I'm telling you something, I'm as carnal as can be. When I'm sick, I don't pray, I don't pass, I don't do nothing, all right? I, I need some help. Oh, you do. You're laughing because you're the same way. <laughs> and so, to get me to pray <laughs> was a God thing. And the spirit of intercessory prayer hit me. Now, let me just pause here. You got to get your flesh. Your flesh never wants to pray. That's right. I don't wake up in the morning and want to read my Bible and pray, but I make it. I, I failed. Yes, I do. But I make it do it. That's what you got to do. Your flesh doesn't. Now, maybe you do sometimes. Sometimes I do when I'm walking with the Spirit of God. But that's because I'm closer with God. And when you're closer with God, it's a little bit more easier. But when you're not praying, you're farther from God. Right. And so, uh, understand what I'm saying. Your flesh doesn't even want to praise God. I didn't come here tonight to, uh, and I'll be, uh, I'll be honest. I didn't feel like praising God, but you know what? Uh, some praise team people and some musicians uh, evidently were praying, and some people were praying, and you set the atmosphere, and it was quickly, we were able to the presence of the Lord. And so you got to force yourself and tell this flesh you're going to pray. Amen. And so, Spirit of God hit me, and the Lord said it this way. I'm being transparent. I want to be honest. I'm not saying this arrogant. You can judge me as you want. To, but I, I don't serve you. I serve the Lord. Amen. 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 I, and yes, we, we, we need to bear one another's burdens. Hello? Amen. 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 And so I'm going to say it this way, the, exactly the way the Lord said. When I was youth president and served in that capacity, and I was so thankful to be able to serve, and I mean that it humbly, uh, the Lord said that he would be coming with the second wave of revival. And you have to understand, and many of you understand, what God has done to the Arizona district, Amen. specifically with our young people. Amen. I mean, they, the, spirit, the hell said that we couldn't have over 300 at our camp, and now we have three over under our camp uh, at senior camp every year. Yes, yeah. Amen. Yeah. And you have to understand when you're at 120 and you go to 300, that's an amazing thing yes, that the Lord is doing. Yes, Not only are 300 young people worshiping the Lord, uh, but there's, they have started Bible clubs. Uh, they have started CLI. Uh, in fact, I was with Christ Temple. And they invited me to speak one day. I didn't even know what I was going to say. I'm the youth president. <laughs> and the Holy Ghost broke out at Glendale Community College. Hallelujah. On the second yes. story level. 
Amen. in an upper room Amen. in a government facility Amen. and there was a, a security guard on the first floor and he was hearing everything but there was a man in a wheelchair up there received the gift of the Holy Ghost Amen. that's what I'm talking about when you're addicted to God young man with the security guard was preaching the gospel on the college campus happen and so we're praying in, in our master bedroom there in our bedroom huh? and the spirit of God hit us we're praying huh? and God said do you remember what I told you when you were serving as youth president I said yeah you said you're going to come with a second wave of revival Lord and he said these words I am now coming to the state of Arizona with a second wave of revival Ooh, yeah. and I am using COVID now understand COVID's real exactly. I've had about 10 people I know most very dear that have died. Yeah. So I'm not making light of it. Yeah. But this is what the Lord said. I'm now coming to the state of Arizona with a second wave of revival. And I'm using COVID to visit my pastors and churches to see who wants to walk with me or who wants a title. And those pastors and pastors, wives and ministers and churches uh, that just want to walk with me, to walk with me, I will give them revival. And now I will use those churches to facilitate the revival in the youth department. And ladies and children.
Yeah. 
I want to finish this story. I want you to continue praying as you wish. I don't want to interrupt the altar call. Oh, Lord. But my father went into that nursing home. And I remember the word of the Lord that said he'd be a healed man and walk out of this hospital. And he was healed. They had no surgery. But he still couldn't walk. And so the enemy came to me. What is worth fighting, the, the hell and devil, the devil will fight. Yeah. What is worth fighting. Yeah. Amen. You're worth it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. If you're not, the devil will leave you alone. Tell him. Tell him. And so the devil immediately came to my mind and said, Well, you heard the word of God kind of like he twisted things around. Mm -hmm. But you probably just added to it. Uh, come on, brother. God said he was going to heal you, Father, but he didn't say, You, you, you added that he was going to walk out of this hospital. Huh. More weeks went by. He's in the nursing home for rehab, and he became anemic. I remember my father fighting depression. I want you to know I, I fought depression in my life. It's not not it's not all spiritual. I understand it's spiritual. Sometimes it's just, we're human. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, that's right. And so you need to have discernment. And and I remember going into that 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 nursing home and sitting, feeling his depression. I said, Dad, I love you. Your grandchildren need you. Your sister-in-laws need you. Your daughters need you. Your sons need you. And he said, thank you. I, I needed that. I, I'm depressed. and just want to give up. And he was ready to go to heaven, but I didn't want to let him go. I got a call again from Wells Fargo as I was training not too far from the hospital to be a banker. And I remember getting the call. And you got it. Dad's in the hospital again at University Medical Center. And uh, he is... Uh, He's bleeding. They can't find where he's bleeding. And so I rush to the ER. And as I'm walking into the ER, <laughs> I see my father on the bed there. And I see him get up. It's been many, many months. I see him put his feet down. And I see him begin to take his first step. Jesus. And as he began to do that, the Lord spoke and said, I told you that he would walk out a human man out of this hospital. And just because it never happened, the way you thought doesn't mean I'm going to lie. I think I get the faith price in the You need to pray for your parents. You need to pray on your daddy. You've got to pray. Don't give up. The word of God is true. And I've come to serve notice to hell. And I, I, I don't have the, the dominion here. Your pastor, Pastor Ezekiel Johnson, his family, and your pastor in their local area, their town and city, they have been given dominion. Huh? I'm going to teach you something right now. Huh? Jesus said we can bind and loose. Huh? And that's the first phase. We bind uh, fear and we loose uh, peace. Uh, we bind doubt uh, and we loose faith. Uh, we bind uh, impurity and we loose uh, his righteousness. Amen. Amen. You can go anywhere and do that. But rest assured, you need to be submitted under your pastor. Yes, amen. Because they have been given another level, and that's called dominion. And dominion says, like Adam, he had dominion. He was in control until sin came. But God gives pastors dominion of their area. And dominion means, in other words, in this context, casting away. So you go from binding and loosing to say, hey, this is my territory. God has given me dominion here. Come on, you're, God. You don't come into my house and tell me what to do. That's right. You do whatever you want to do. That's right. You need the name of the Lord Jesus Amen. right now. And they leave. Amen. Fear has to leave. Doubt has to leave. Impurity has to leave. Amen. Likewise, mom and dad, you have dominion in your home. Hell does not have control of your That's children. Right. You Amen. can Amen. let the Lord Amen. have control of your children. Just give me a minute. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And one more time, lift your hands and let's just love the Lord. Let's thank Him right now. Thank you, Jesus. God, you have given us dominion in our homes. You've given us the victory by your blood, Jesus. You've given us dominion in our churches under our pastors. We are the head and we are not the tail. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, that your gift of healing and miracles are still real today. We thank you, God, that your spirit is still being poured out. Thank you for your word, God. My prayer today, Lord, is that a young person and an adult would be addicted to you. 
that God, the next time that conviction would set in, your conviction, the next time we get on our iPads and tablets and phones uh, for works, emails, uh, and, and Facebook and the news, uh, and Instagram and social media and all those things, God, that you quickly remind us of this message and we put it down and we open your good word uh, and we read uh, at least a scripture a day uh, and read even more, God. Uh, oh, God, let us be addicted to you. Shut up and I'm going to say one last thing. Hopefully, uh, I remember the day that my father came in. Uh, and and he, he's not perfect. Uh, the Lopez family's not perfect. You know that if you've been around me. Uh, you know that I'm not perfect. Uh, but my father came. Uh, and uh, he came to the first service and I, uh, the, for many months. Uh, and uh, he walked into the faith tabernacle. And I'm going to be honest, it was a dead service. It was one of those services. That, and, and thankfully, it, it, probably 9.9 Maybe at least nine out of ten times in this district, we don't have dead services anymore. Hello? Not that we did before. <laughs> Let me clarify that. Amen. Hey, but you understand what I'm saying? It was just an off night. Church was off, and then we still had two services and one. But that Sunday night service, maybe it was a Monday or a Sunday morning, I don't remember, but nobody was worshiping. The worship leader was singing. Nobody really was worshiping. And all of a sudden, I see my father during the worship service walk in. He had, he had a walker. You know, Dr. Payne and all those neurologists, they looked at him before he left. They shook his hand. He goes, why are you shaking my hand? They said, congratulations, Mr. Lopez. He said, for what? They said, you should either be dead or have paralyzed. We, from this point, have never heard of what has happened to you. They said, you're, we see you kind of stumbling a little. Here's, here's a walker. <laughs> I'm telling you, the devil will do everything he can to fight the word of God. Yeah. And so he's in the walker. He's got that walker, and he's, he's just trucking along. <laughs> and he's going, and he's in the back. And he's in the back. And, and nobody's worshiping, but he, he's worshiping. All of a sudden, I look up from the platform, and that walker's pushed away. Uh-huh. And my dad's just, you know, yeah. you got to see my dad. He, he, has this, he, he just does it himself. I mean, he's going. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. That's what he does. And as a teenager, I was like, oh. Now, who's that? He's like, my dad. And I, and I don't do this. I used to make fun of him. I was like, ah, that's my dad. And then when the Holy Ghost hit me, I was, I was I dancing. It was a little bit faster, though. And, and what do you know it, Brother Herman? That is just something about that man. <laughs> you used to make money of your dad. Now look at you. <laughs> All right, Elder, we don't need you right now. <laughs> Teasing. And he's dancing. And he's going. Cool. And as he's dancing, you understand, my mother, her name is Rosa. She's from Mexico, and she would, every time my dad would dance before then, she'd hold his, his hands, not now, Ray, not round. Now, because he would dance when you're not supposed to dance. <laughs> it's offering time, and my dad's like, <laughs> no, he just dance. Come on, man. I know. But all, not at that moment, she wasn't holding his hand. She was dancing, too. Oh, yeah. And all I'm going to just say it this way. When you're addicted to the presence of God, yeah. you'll begin to dance even when it's off in time. That's you right. just do whatever. whatever. Because yeah. you're addicted to God. You don't care what other people are saying. Order. You give order and the pastor gives order in your church, okay? And you gotta do it right. But his addiction allowed him to still worship the Lord. Yes. And it affected my mother. And all of a sudden, good Bishop Pastor Connor gets up there and says, I don't understand, church. I don't understand. Here's a man that should be dead and half paralyzed and, and is worshiping the Lord. Uh, he says, what's your problem? Tell me what's your problem. Why can't you just worship the Lord and love the Lord and live for him? I'm preaching to the choir, but the next time you come into the house of God and you don't feel like worshiping God. Just tell your flesh, what's your problem, flesh? What's your problem? God delivered me. I just worship him. I just worship him. I 
Josh, you can play that keeper. But I wonder if we could worship the Lord just from the bottom of our heart. I know we've been doing that. I wonder if we could just have a, a spirit of thanksgiving for this the next minute or so right now. From the bottom of our heart and our souls, uh, giving God praise uh, and glory. Amen. Would you do that right now? There's just something about hearing the people of God. There's something about this group tonight. God praising the Lord. On the way to the back, to the left, to the right. I see people praising God. I see people praising God. I see people praising God. I see people praising God.